So Google is planning to expand its space in New York City. The Wall Street Journal reports that the company is nearing a uh, real estate deal in Manhattan that could add space for more than 12,000 employees, and it would nearly double Google's current staffing in New York City. Along with Amazon's rumored headquarters coming to the area as well, this could turn the Big Apple into a major tech city. Eric Gertler, executive chairman of U.S. News & World Report, joins us now to talk about this. Good to see you. Good morning. So, I, so it's funny that we are talking to you because just as recently as this week, I was looking for a possible move to Long Island City, New York, and that's where the rumors are that Google is going to put, uh, uh, or Amazon is going to put the, their, their new sort of headquarters. And I thought, do I want to live with these like young <laughs> tech people? On one hand, the neighborhood's going to be completely upgraded. Correct. Pricing of housing is going to go say, up you're probably extremely. Paying more. Get in now. I, I get it. Get it now. <laughs> is this a good thing? The question is: Is this a good thing for communities like Queens, or is it a you know not so good thing? Well, first of all, good morning, and I, I think it's I think it's inevitable. We're seeing that uh, cities are becoming major tech centers, and this is only going to continue. And with that, when companies want you know we're living uh, and working in a knowledge economy, they want those millennials to come in. They understand the need for specialized. Uh, workers, those that have engineering skills, and so that's that's part of the city life uh, that we're living in. It's a global competition for cities, uh, for talent rather, and and that talent is here in New York City, and that's why companies like Amazon and Google want to be here. They want to tap into the great talent that we have in New York City. And you're right, there there will be some effects in the long term. So, Eric, yeah. this is what I think of. I I know that the rental prices you're talking about in, in like San Francisco is insane. <laughs> like you look right. at the apartments there, and it almost seems like it's a joke. Like there's no way that people are paying <laughs> yeah. this much. Right. In rent, it's already crazy here mm -hmm. in New York. That's yes. got to be one of the concerns sure. that you know the rentals are just going to go through the roof. Sure. So, in one sense, it's basic supply and demand. This city is attracting people, it's attracting millennials, it's attracting workers, and we have, in a sense, um, a limited supply of housing. There's, there's regulations. Uh, builders can't build fast enough. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we've seen that in San Francisco. We've seen that in New York. The housing costs are going up. So if you want to move to Long Island City, you better move quickly before those costs go up and before, if Amazon moves to Long Island City. Well, and, and of course, there's other consequences. I was going to say, what are some of the other sort of negative impacts that we might be concerned about? So certainly, when you bring in skilled workers, you're paying them more. There's going to be a competition for talent in New York City. So those salaries are going to go up. Uh, on the flip side, what that means is greater inequality. And we've got to be very concerned about the inequality from skilled to unskilled workers, even, even when skilled workers have a multiplying effect. You have a job. Um, as an engineer, that may bring someone in a Starbucks or a coffee shop. Right. So we've got to be very careful uh, about that. Oh, Eric, what about the argument that, for, I was born in Queens, what about the argument that cities that do this lose a little bit of their soul, and why not just put them in more rural areas across the country yeah. where people will benefit? Rising uh, wages, mm -hmm. rising talent, that could help a, yeah. a, a state like Montana or in the Midwest somewhere more than it'll help New York sure. City, which already has, mm -hmm. you know, what we have. Right. Well, you know, there has been a trend to urbanization, and that's gone on for the last 70 years. In uh, today, 65% of the country live in cities. It generates 75% of the economic power uh, at the, you know, 75% of our GDP. But think about it this way. The companies that used to be in rural areas, they had assembly workers. They made things. Today, these companies come into cities because they're producing services. And instead of assembly workers, we have engineers. So many of those companies, they simply can't be in rural areas. They want to tap into the knowledge. Um, and it's not just hiring people in cities, those engineers want to work with others. They demand proximity. Mm. Um, th think about it this way. They not only want to be in cities, but now we're seeing all these workers go in these shared workspaces right. like the WeWork. So it's... Well, I was sort of thinking more along the, the, the lines of the Great Migration, where yeah. you had people moving from the South to to cities like Detroit right. during the early 20th century. Um, 
because there were opportunities, sort of the go right. west young man yeah. type of uh, you know, idea. What Eric Doesn't is that talking work? about is a competition for talent. You know, what you were talking about is you could be relatively unskilled. That What was great about that and why right. massive amounts of people moved is because you could be relatively unskilled, gain a skill on the job and make a really good income. But here, you, you have very talented people. They could go to Wall Street instead. Right. They could go everywhere. They want to live in New York for whatever reason, or Miami, or L.A., and so luring them to so the Midwest the, so may I guess be a that's challenge. that's the issue, right? Yeah. It's like yeah. you, don't, you can't make something, a utopian you know, workplace, in a part of the country where people don't want to move to. Right. But my well, feeling the, was that you expert. should be able to move, you should be able to sure. attract people to those areas. But, but we are seeing other examples. Take Pittsburgh, for example, which we know is the yes. great steel town. And, and there it's transformed, and a lot through the work of two wonderful universities, through Carnegie Mellon right. in, in, you know, in Pittsburgh. That's helped. And then you've seen other little cities, or smaller cities rather, like, like Des Moines, that are attracting people because people want a quality of life. They want a different pace. So we're, we're seeing that, and you're right, but you're still seeing the bigger cities attract a lot more of the talent right now. Right. So interesting. That's really interesting. Yeah, you made a good point about that, though, about the labor that was heading to those major yeah. uh, urban areas in the north. Fascinating stuff, Very Eric. Good stuff, thank you Eric. so much. Thank, thank you. you very much.